Hello and welcome to our second of two games in this Elida Fall Classic opening night between Elida and Bluffton. I'm Evan Skilleter along with Mitch Monfort and we had a great game, game one, Wasion winning 3-2 over Botkins and Mitch, I think we're expecting uh, a lot of the same t right here. Yes, indeed. I mean, that first game lived up to the expectation that the two of us had and, uh, and again, I feel like the conditions are great for these kids to have a lovely game of soccer tonight and, and hopefully, uh, you know, we get the quality match we expect. Bluffton will be wearing the white uniforms as they get things kicked off here. They start with Kyle Basil in goal, as well as Theo Andreas, Alec Davis, Levi Antrim, Ethan Oglesby, Jack Brown, and we almost have a goal here to start as my <laughs> lineup intro was cut off, but we continue with Nick Lovett and Nolan Hoffman and Ben Hartzler for Bluffton as uh, that's quite a start for the Pirates. Yes, indeed. I mean, that, that young man had a great touch on the ball. Uh, they give him that offensive opportunity that they needed, and uh, Great defense and recovery by Elida to, to make sure that ball didn't find the back of the net. Bluffton moving back into that final third as they play it up the right side. This will be out of reach of the target. That's Alec Davis. Now Elida starting with Gabe Adcock, Ethan Thomas, Ben Osman, Aiden Kreitz, Tanner Lehman, Grant Hardiman, Evan Jackson, Elijah Barraza, Joel Martinez, Carson Wright, and Camden Howard. That one goes out for a goal kick. Want to thank our scoreboard sponsor tonight, Charles River. Charles River is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Beautiful night for soccer. Got a nice breeze. Uh, not too heavy. Not going to impact the game at all, but certainly making things pleasant for the fans here as that goal kick played on the ground and taken away by the Pirates. Up the right side they go, but it's cleared away nicely by Tanner Lehman. Bluffton's seen the opportunity right now that they've got kind of a lighter on their heels and, you know, they're applying that pressure just to make sure they stay in this end and hopefully get an opportunity to finish here. And the has got to find a way to get out of this real quick and, you know, get off their heels and connect some passes to go forward. That cross went out for an Elida throw as they send it in. Elida of the Western Buckeye League, Bluffton in the Northwest Conference. And, Interesting about Bluffton and their conference. They've won every single Northwest Conference title ever. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. <laughs> you want to talk about consistency and a program, and uh, th that's, what, that's what you'd like to see. They, they uh, you know, win that conference and uh, continue to do it every single year. Bluffton able to clear that one away. We had a dangerous play in the box. Looked like maybe a hand touched the ball, but a lot of times if you're in that natural position and – the ball kind of pops up on you, the referees will let that go. Sure, you know, and that, that's a tough call to make. I mean, it's a judgment call in a split second, and nice little outside hit there, but it looked like it was in the natural position, the, the range in which the ref would give the defender the benefit of the doubt. Ball sent to midfield. Elida puts it on the ground, but it's taken away. Now bluffing up the right side, maybe a chance developing. That ball chipped up over the keeper. Good awareness there by Nolan Hoffman to recognize the keeper was off his line, but the execution not quite there. Yeah, and Hoffman's getting that ball behind them, and they're playing a nice little through ball on that right side right now, and that's giving Elida a little bit of trouble. They're they're kind of getting caught off guard with his quickness, side, his, and, you know, that's that's something the Elida's going to have to adjust to here. Elida working the ball forward. Ethan Thompson with it at his feet. Ethan Thompson... A tremendous offensive threat. I mean, he can play all over the pitch, but when it comes to scoring, that kid can do a lot. Yeah, Ethan Thomas is definitely their playmaker for Elida, and he, it's well known that he's going to, you know, as he goes, Elida goes. And, you know, we saw that in the first game, that a team can ride a player's uh, ability and momentum and skill, you know, to really assert their dominance in a game. And hopefully they can find Ethan uh, the entire game here. Yeah, a little too much contact by the Pirates as Elida will have a free kick in a threatening position. That's Grant Hardiman coming up to place the ball down and take this free kick. Hardiman, a senior defender. Still waiting for his squad to get set up. Looks like they might consider playing this short. They'll play this down the right side, but a defender there to try to clear. He sent it right into the box. I'm sure it's not what he meant to do, but now Bluffton able to clear it. Yeah, that was an absolute dangerous kick, and, you know, he just got fortunate enough that they were able to get that out. 
But Elidon might be able to capitalize on that right now. now a little contact as Elida still with the ball in their final third. Bluffton trying to close them off. This is Joel Martinez. He has it taken away. Now Bluffton trying to counter. They'll send this one down the right side and those wheels of Nolan Hoffman out run by the wheels of Tanner Lehman. Nice job by both of those guys turning on the Jets. Now a cross for the Pirates. That's knocked down and that will stay in play long enough for the keeper to pick it up. Yeah, Bluffton really transitioned well. They had a great uh, presence of pressure against the light and that allowed them to get out and, you know, hit that ball we just talked about earlier. They're, they're finding him and, oh, see if they can get Ethan Thomas on the ball here. Thomas working against Landon Novak. Thomas now on the right foot, and it's knocked away there. Good job by number three. That's Alec Davis. Now on the left side, Aiden Kreitz. Kreitz hits the deck, cleared away by the Pirates. Here's Hoffman. Hoffman, again, trying to use those wheels by getting behind the defense. He's going to send this out to the left. Jack Brown running it down. Brown now to Hoffman. Hoffman waiting for some cavalry to get into the box, and in the meantime has it taken away by Barraza. Barraza did an excellent job of staying between that, that player and the goal and just fundamental defense, and that allowed him to take that ball away and get it out of that threatening position. Now Hoffman. Hoffman alone in the box now, and I think a whistle was blown. Do they call a foul there eventually? Yeah, he, uh, he discarded the defender with some arm movement right there. He... He uses size advantage to throw the defender out of the way, which, uh, you know, obviously you can't do. I saw the same thing, but I thought for a split second he might get away with it. Yes, sir. It Good was job good. by the referees. And I'll tell you what, this is the same referee crew we had in the first game, and they did a tremendous job in a game that was close, that got chippy. They did a great job keeping things under control. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better way to handle that first game. And like you said, we hope they continue to do so. And so far... They seem to be doing a pretty good job, keeping an eye on the flow of the game and making sure everything's legal. Elida clears it forward. It's knotted down by the Pirates. Now again down the right side. This time they're looking for Alec Davis. Davis fighting against Kreitz, and it's out for an Elida throw. Season 18 of Sports Report started Friday night. You can join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive football coverage around. All season long Fridays at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Now they get the ball behind the defense. This is Thomas. Thomas can be lethal in front of goal, and he puts it in past the keeper for our first goal of the night. Ethan Thomas with the nice finish. I mean, you want to talk about a perfect ball. That young man came through and, and played a ball that spit, split the defense that allowed Ethan Thomas to run right on it. And it's tough for a keeper in that one-on-one -on -one situation with a uh, prolific, prolific scorer like uh, Ethan Thomas. With that, we will step aside. We'll be right back with more after this on WOSN. Our scoreboard is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. one nothing on that Charles River scoreboard after a goal from Ethan Thomas just eight and a half minutes in. And actually, it's very similar to what we saw in the last game, eight and a half minutes in, Wasian getting onto the board. And we have put our first tally on that Charles River board. Can we get another one? Here's Gabe Adcock. Adcock loses it, and Bluffton sends it into the midfield. Now, Mitch... That was really the first good opportunity that we saw for Elida. We saw a lot of Bluffton moving forward into their final third, but Elida able to capitalize. Yeah, I think Elida knows, you know, they can get the ball up top and they have playmakers and they're able to finish. And, you know, just a little bit of pressure up top changes the game for Elida. And in my mind, Elida doesn't need a ton of possession, just needs a few opportunities and they're able to capitalize on them pretty regularly. Elida back to work. Grant Hardeman. On the far side, now Thomas drops it back, but Hoffman there to take it away. Hoffman with three defenders around him, tries to get around one and takes a little bump, but certainly not enough for the referee to blow a whistle. Yeah, that's that's quality team defense you'd like to see out of Elida. They they had, knew they had the numbers and they, and they used that to advantage. Another ball cut out by the Pirates defense. 
And you can tell Elida is happy to just try to send it behind that defense and get Ethan Thomas on the end or Gabe Adcock. But Bluffton kind of trying to do the same thing on their end. Yeah, we, we might have some tired boys here tonight. I know this, right. this is Elida's first game of the year. And, you know, like we said in the first uh, game, that it takes a while to get those legs. And if uh, everybody's playing long ball, somebody's got to run after it. So uh, we could see some tired bodies tonight. Pirates work it outside with Landon Novak. Novak around Adcock. That one taken away by Kreitz. Back up to Adcock. And both teams working to gain possession. Now Kreitz with a little bit of space. Kreitz closed off. Couldn't find anywhere to go with the ball. Good job by the Pirates cutting off passing lanes. And eventually it was taken away by number 19. That's Ben Hartzler. Here comes some speed oh, out boy. the outside. Evan Jackson. Jackson, the cross on the ground, knocked away. That was an absolutely perfect pass to come back in that 45-degree angle. And just unlucky not to be able to finish that. But I tell you what, you, you want to talk about a difference maker. That right wing was moving. Uh, Jackson was was moving pretty quickly. And a different, different player uh, when it comes to the speed caliber we've seen so far. And there's a lot of speed all over for Elida. You talk about Barraza. You talk about Adcock. Thomas has some wheels. We just saw Jackson right there. It, it can be dangerous you get the ball out in space. Yes, indeed. And I think, again, that's how Elida wants to play. They know that's where their uh, skill set is and speed, and they, they like to use it. Novak nods that one up in the air. As Elida sees it out for a throw, that was Ben Osman shielding as it goes out. Now Kreitz. Novak gets it back, sends it up over the top. Lehman runs it down and kicks it out once again. And again, we just talked about speed. This kid is covering a ton of ground very quickly for Elida on the defensive end. And right now appears to be a pretty good defender to, to keep uh, bluffing away from their uh, opportunities to score. Free kick drawn by the Alec Davis, excuse me. Theo Andreas will come over to take it. Bluffton setting up on the back post with four players ready to make a run. Andreas. That one's low, cut out, and we'll have a throw for the Pirates on the far side with 28.30 to go. First half of action, 1-0 after an Ethan Thomas goal at the 32-34 mark. Pirates send it in on the far side. It's Davis. Now Levi Antrim. Antrim wins possession back. That one's sent toward the goal. Cut out nicely. And right now, Bluffton's doing an excellent job keeping Elida trapped in their defensive half. Novak looking for the run of Jack Brown, but a little too tight to the goalkeeper who grabs it with no problem and sends it up. Now the ball all the way quickly back to the Pirate keeper who swings and misses, but good coverage by the Pirate defense. Yeah, I'm sure a lot is going to take note of that right there. You know, the, the keeper had a, a rough play on that, and hopefully, uh, you know, he, he can get that back within his skill set. And, you know, just make sure next time he has a play. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of will continue to play that over yeah. top. I mean, that's the way they like to play. And, and I'm sure that goal is going to second guess coming back out like that. And a lot of times on a natural grass surface, especially one that just had a full game played beforehand, that ball can take some weird hops. And I think sometimes as a goalkeeper, you need to consider that and maybe play a little more, uh, we'll say conservatively. Sure, sure. Yeah, that, that, that's a tough play as a goalie. I mean, I mean, as a coach, we train them to use our hands all the time. And that's a tough ball as it's getting kicked up on you. And you know you have that pressure. And like you said, we just had a match before. So that the, the turf is not – in perfect condition. And an offside there as Adcock still hadn't gotten back to an onside position. Referee blows the whistle quick. And the Pirates will get a free kick from the edge of that final third. Ball headed down by Tanner Lehman. Still up in the air is neither team really getting on the end of it. Now Novak 
Trying to send it down the right side, but it heads out for a bulldog throw. That's a nice quick throw and maybe get an opportunity. But Bluffton was able to uh, keep that within their possession. And, uh, you know, oh, it's a quick pace game. It is. Uh, it is. Andreas now with a little bit of space. Tries to send it back, but Adcock right there to just be a pest. Uh, Didn't get the ball, but he made things tough, and you can see the Pirates having to drop it all the way back. Yes, indeed. I mean, he's kind of like a gnat out there on that yeah. possession. I mean, Bluffin probably thought they had a little bit of time, and next thing you know, he's closed down that space. and just makes it difficult to have that possession that Bluffton would like to have. You it back to work. Good ball movement, but that one cut out. The Pirate center defense doing a nice job. That time it was Ethan Oglesby. Back down the right, though, come the Bulldogs. That cross goes off a Pirate out for a corner. Second of the game for Elida. Ethan Thomas back into the game. His father, Tom, the coach of the Elida Bulldogs. Dan Lee taking over the Pirate program after a very successful run by Dan Smucker that saw a Pirate state uh, state runner-up appearance, excuse me, two years ago. Almost said state semifinal, which they did play in, but they won that game and played down at Crew Stadium. Sure, and you want to talk about, like you said before the game, just two quality programs. I mean, a lot of year in and year out produces uh, a quality team, and so has Bluffton. So this, like I said, this is going to be a great game, and I think both teams have a unique style that they want to play, and, and should be uh, great to watch tonight. Thomas uses his speed to win a corner. He'll place it down. Sends this one low into the box. Novak trying to clear for Bluffton. Sends it up the left side. Grabbed by Hoffman. Hoffman sends it forward. And he lighted there to gain possession. Now Elida down the right side. Numbers in the box. Cross it on the ground as Thomas tries to slide down and knock it in, and instead it's off the Pirates for a corner. Yeah, I mean, that was a great possession. You saw the ball move from left to right and back across, and, uh, you know, Jackson played a great ball to the ground and gave them opportunity. Not only did they get an opportunity to shoot, but now they get a corner off that and hopefully get a chance to finish or, you know, a, a great play by Bluffton, and maybe we get a counterattack here. Thomas, another low driving corner cleared away by Bluffton. He lied a Chases it down and keeps it in play. Thomas, one touch pass. Down the right side go the Bulldogs. Another cross this time to the top of the box. That's knotted away and out for a Bulldog throw. 22 minutes and change to play. First half of action. I think maybe Light has figured some things out. They've kind of got Bluffton kind of on their heels right now for the last three, four minutes. And, and this could be... A good opportunity for them to, you know, get another goal here. Pirates looking to counter as Brown sends it down the right side. Elida drops it back to Tanner Lehman. Looking for Ben Osman. Osman has it taken away. It was Levi Antrim who draws a foul and Bluffton takes it quick, but it's taken away by Carson Wright. On side is Ethan Thomas, but the ball too far to the right as Basil comes up and clears it away. Maybe a chance to cross. And does it go off the Pirates? It does. So another corner coming up. Elida with a lot of pressure on this Pirates back line. Yes, indeed. I mean, we've seen multiple corner kicks, you know, and like we said the first game, you get enough of them, eventually you're going to put one in. As as a coach, you love these opportunities. Ethan Thomas, they think about playing it short. Evan Jackson heads over. They do play it short to Thomas. Thomas around one defender, shoots with the left, and that one's wide right. But a good idea, as we said, Thomas can score from – Multiple angles in multiple ways, and that time with a good look. Yes, indeed, and 
that was a, a great design play. You know, you want your playmakers on the ball, and, and he gets he gets on the ball heading towards the net. You know, just just that opportunity again for somebody to finish. He knows how to finish, and, and coach knows. Get him the ball. He'll put it in the back of the net. Fight for possession in midfield as the Pirates able to send it back toward the Elida defense, but no one there in white. Now Elida Hardeman sending it forward behind the defense as Gavin Reisner tries to run it down, but they drop it back to the keeper, and that time Basil gets a nice foot into it. Almost taken away. Still a fight for possession. Good clean contact as Elida comes up with the ball. Now down the right. Thomas. Thomas, the shot. Thomas, the goal. I mean, you want to talk about a great looking shot. He had no angle there and was able to put that in the side netting just Elida by again. Goal, two, Move the ball, you find your playmakers, and guess what he does? He finishes. Ethan Thomas with his second gives Elida a 2-0 lead with 2015 to go in the first half as we step aside. You're watching High School Soccer on WOSN. 2-0 to score here at the second game of our doubleheader. Elida Fall Classic at Elida High School. Ethan Thomas with two goals to his name. And Elida with a nice 2-0 lead. And I'll tell you what, they have really been stringing together some nice possession, keeping the ball away from the Pirates. Sure, at the beginning of the game, it looked more of a long ball kind of style. And here recently, the momentum has been on Elida's side, and they've done an excellent job of just keeping possession, keeping, you know, bluffing on their heels, and then let's find our playmaker and let them finish it. This one played down the left side as Hoffman gives chase, but I'll tell you what, Lehman has done a really nice job kind of playing in, a, what do you want to call it, a stopper, sweeper type role, just playing. He's the last defender back. They're not worried about a flat back four, and he's come over and, and really taken away what the Pirates are trying to do. Yeah, definitely. He's at that sweeper position for him, and he, he's done an excellent job just cleaning that up, and, you know, Bluffton keeps playing that ball, and right now he's, he's, he's the answer, and uh, you know, if he keeps playing that way, it could be a long night bluffed and offensively because right now they just cannot figure him out. He has wheels as well. You know, he's not just a smart player that knows where to be. He can also make up for any mistake with those wheels. No, oh, there's no doubt about that. He uses that to his advantage. He knows how fast he is and, you know, his ability to close down. And that's a, that's a difference maker on defense. Thomas trying to send it behind the defense, looking for Gabe Adcock. Cut out by the Pirates, and now they're trying to work the ball forward as it's dropped back for Lehman. Good ball, Elijah. Uh, well, that was a great pass to get him in behind the defense. If that stays in a little bit longer, Elijah could be in another scoring opportunity again. Landon Novak sending it towards Xander Mays, taken away by Elida. Nice step there by Ethan Ramsdale, who knocks it out for a Bluffton throw. Novak threw it in. It was knocked away by Ramsdale, and now it will go all the way back to the goalkeeper. Camden Howard, who was busy to start this match and really is probably yawning back there <laughs> yeah. as of late. Yes, indeed. I mean, the first what, minute we had an amazing opportunity for Bluffton, and they really haven't gotten that chance. I think Elida realizes, ooh, what a uh, dangerous play that was right there. That took some guts to, to make that move as the last defender. Lehman again covering and taking the ball away. Bluffton at halftime, you think they're going to have to figure out a different way to attack this defense. Yeah, I think they might have to do some, some diagonals on the backside maybe to open them up. And, you know, they're – they're a little bit too direct for that sweeper because he's he's been the answer right now. And and I think again, I think the first minute they caught Elida off guard, but Elida's adjusted very well and and it's 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 great to see the matchup on the teams and how they're going to play each other going forward in this game. Shepard returns for Bluffton. Good fight for possession as Bluffton takes it back. 
Nolan Hoffman, that pass taken away. The pass from Luke Shepard, taken by Elida. That was a great ball to find that middle center midfielder to get him open. And yeah, Bluffton goal is adjusted. He realized that Elida's going to play that through ball. He's going to stay a higher line, and it's going to be tougher. It's going to have to go to the flag if Elida wants to find that space behind Bluffton. Now Elida attacking the right side. Thomas playing out wide. Thomas, touch to his right, and as you would expect, Bluffton's committing two defenders to Ethan Thomas on that run as one knocks it out for a corner. Yes, indeed. I mean, I'm sure they're well aware of his ability to finish, and uh, the, sometimes it's tough to find that speed on tape, but it's, it's pretty evident that this kid can play. Thomas drops it back for Adcock. Adcock closed off. Bluffton able to knock the ball. Now out for a throw and some substitutes ready to check in. Well, at least one is. Martinez did an excellent job slowing that ball, that ball down. If he doesn't slow that down, that could be an opportunity for Bluffton to hit him on the counterattack. And, you know, that, that's an excellent job just to make it easier for your defense and keep the ball on the Bluffton side of the field. Looking for the number of the player that just checked in. I think it's 21, Charlie Wright. Ball all the way back Charlie to the Wright goalkeeper. <laughs> nice punt there by the goalkeeper as it gets it gets it all the way back toward the defense, headed back toward Basil who grabs it. Thomas was right there. If that ball would have been any softer, he might have been able to get to it. Yes, indeed. And again, we're, Thomas is looking for an opportunity to get the ball on his feet. And if he does that, you know, more than likely he's probably going to finish it. Ball trickles back into the box. Camden Howard picks it up. 14 and a half to play. First half. Two goals from Ethan Thomas. The two tallies on the board right now as Elida leading this one 2-0 on the Charles River scoreboard. Oh, that's a nice... Interception of the pass right there, and you know, see if Bluffton can now counter that real quick. Pirates trying to work it through the midfield. Luke Shepard turns, had it taken away, but Andreas able to get it back for the Pirates. And his pass, he had a runner. That was Levi Antrim working down the right side, but the ball a little bit behind its target. Yeah, if he was able to get a little air on that, it's probably a different play. And, and Bluffton has a great opportunity to maybe find that chance to get in that final third and maybe get an opportunity to score. Now Bluffton sending it down the left side. Out comes the goalkeeper. He gets there in time. And Howard clears it all the way to the Pirates back line who will try to send it forward. Goes out for a throw. And there's a stoppage here. I think they got him off sides. He came up back from an offside gotcha. position and made a play on the ball and unfortunately just gave the ball back to Lydon. Good eye from the coach himself, <laughs> Mitch Monfort. So Elida will restart. They send this one deep. Knocked out by the Pirates. So a throw coming up on the far side. Evan Jackson will throw it in. Jackson sends it forward down the line, and Pirates knock it out again. So we'll do it again from a little closer this time. This time the Pirates will keep possession, only momentarily, though. It's taken away. Here's Joel Martinez. He sends it toward goal. Made Basil slide a bit. Yeah. Nothing doing. Not a bad look, especially, uh, you know, from that distance, you know. Make him honor a shot from distance as, as we keep going forward. And they know you have those wheels, so they're going to back up. And, you know, you got to take advantage of the space they're going to give you. Elida now in possession as Osmond sends it outside for Jackson. Bluffton still a bit on their heels here since the first five to seven minutes of this game. 
Yeah, we talked about this at the first game. You're looking at momentum. I mean, Bluffton came out on fire and really put a lighter on their heels, and now it's it swung the other way, and Light is doing an excellent job capitalizing on this possession, these possessions and these goals that they put in, and it's really frustrating Bluffton right now. Pirates still not able to take back possession as it's with Adcock. Thomas sends it down the right side. Jackson able to keep possession. Jackson with the cross and good hands by Kyle Basil who brings that one in. That was a nice hard cross to the back post. Yes, indeed. That goalie doesn't make that play. He's got somebody on the back post and we could be e easily at 3 nothing. And uh, what, a, what a catch by the young man to get up there and get it at its highest point. Now the Pirates... Trying to move it forward with possession. Elida with a nice press up the field. Yeah, Elida's being rather pesky right now, and uh, it's frustrating Bluffton. Basil pops it back to the midfield, and again, Elida there first. The Pirates just don't have anyone winning the ball in the middle of the field right now. Yeah, I, I think uh, Elida f feels the ability to put the ball in the back of the net, and they want to get a chance to put it there. A cross knocked down. Hoffman touches, gets it right back. Now a little bit of space to move forward, but a little miscommunication as it's taken away by Barraza. Barraza now at the right side and a foul called, so a free kick coming up. Yeah, I mean, again, anytime uh, Bluffton is on the ball, you feel like there's a black shirt around him, and it's it's got to be aggravating at this point. And, and, you know, hopefully they can find an answer to this press that's going on right now from Elida. Thomas drops it back. Now they switch fields. First time we've really seen them play down this left side in a while. Yes, indeed. This Aiden Kreitz having his pass taken away. Last touch by the Pirates. Be sent back in by Carson Wright, except we've got some substitutes first with 9.45 to go in the first half. The free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. Back underway here. It's in for Kreitz. Taken away once again by the Pirates, and it'll go out for another throw. Carson Wright slides over. He'll throw this in. Thomas at the edge of the box. Thomas to his left. Thomas looking for a cross. Sends it in toward goal. Gets past everyone. And the shot no good. The Pirates able to get a touch on that ball before it went into the net. I'll tell you what. That ball snuck past everybody. And there was a good play at the back of the net. That was Ethan Ramsdale crashing that back post. But the Pirates able to thwart the effort. Ethan played an excellent ball across the goal mouth, and Bluffton's really lucky that I didn't find the back of the net. I mean, he, he made a great move and was able to lay that off, and nobody was there except for the Lido player. But they ended up keeping it out of the net, so good job. Thomas with the cross once again, this time from the right side. It floats over everybody as Kreitz runs it down. Now Gavin Reisner, and it goes out. Um, Referee didn't really make a motion, but it is Elida throw. Throw it right to the Pirates. <laughs> a little confusion there from everybody, everybody I think. Everybody was confused who the ball it was. Nice tackle right there. How about Barraza coming over and taking it away from Hoffman? That was an absolute clean ball. He took off his foot and had control of it. Now down the right side, and again we'll have a corner. Where? What are we at now? Is eight? I think we're at eight. Eight first half corners for Elida to zero for Bluffton. Bluffton really has to figure out how to get this ball out and put it in Elida's defensive half. Maybe this is the opportunity here. Yeah, really no other option right there for uh, Alec Davis. Is Elida pressuring him? And if he gives possession back right there, there's a pretty clear path yes, to an opportunity. Abraza tries another tackle and still able to dispossess. Maybe not as clean as the first one, but just as effective. Nice touch and turn right there. Elida's really starting to move that ball around. I mean, they're really pinging it around, and, and Bluffton's kind of lost on what to do right now. They're kind of figuring out amongst themselves, like, where are we going, who's covering what? And the way Elida's moving it, 
Uh, you know, Bluffton's really going to have to come up with a plan at halftime to kind of make an adjustment here. Ethan Blount, the freshman, on for Bluffton. Now Hoffman, maybe some space to move. Hoffman down the right side and played it toward the wrong defender is Lehman, who's done just a fantastic job so far tonight, runs that one down as well. Yes, again, I mean, he read that ball perfectly and they're gonna have to do something a little bit different with him on how to get behind him. Andreas, maybe a chance. Andreas has his shot blocked. Pirates get it back, try a shot, knocked away by Elida. Now Novak tries to put it back into the box. It's knocked down and knocked down again. Good job there by Jordan Cardenas. Did an excellent job. I mean, he's just taking angles, and that's a tough play for that young man to find an option because it's fundamental defense. Down the right side, and now Bluffton win their first corner. Thomas will come over straight to the edge of the box as Andreas sets up to take this one. Theo Andreas floats this one into the box and through everybody. Bluffton able to get it back. Still some danger as Elida's clearance goes off their own player. That was Skylar Kirk who was in the line of fire. And we'll have another corner from the far side. Bluffton lining up toward the back post this time. Nice ball floated in. It's loose and a nice job clearing the line by Kreitz. And it looks like we have a foul near the box anyway, but Kreitz in a great spot. And whether that goal would have counted or not, that's a heads up defensive play. Yes, indeed. I mean, he's in the right position to make that play. And, and again, Lida has an answer to what Bluffton's trying to do. Still 2-0 on the Charles River scoreboard. Two goals from Ethan Thomas, about 12 minutes apart. 32-34 mark and the 2015 mark in this half. Bluffton trying to put something together, but Elida has done a great job offensively. And again, they get behind the defense with Ethan Ramsdale sending it up for Thomas. Cut out by the Pirates. Good job sliding over there by Xander Mays. Might have been Ben Hartzler actually back there for the Pirates. A little far for these old eyes. <laughs> Steve Bluffton's just starting to get a little change of pace right now. They're kind of figuring some things out maybe. And, you know, right before the half, see if they can try to put one in the back of the net. And we'll have a foul and a free kick coming up. And this is a dangerous one. This is a nice angle to get that ball in the back post. And, uh... It looks like a, we got a cramped up pirate there as Alec Davis still on the ground. Clock continues to tick. He's able to get back up, which is good. Pirates lining up for this free kick. Andreas and Novak. As Novak runs over, Andreas will take. Edge of the box, no one there. And he lighted with plenty of time to clear this one away as they send it into the other half of the field. Basil knocks this up in the air. Novak runs on the end. Novak around Kreitz, sends it up the right side. And nice job there by the goalkeeper Howard coming out. The Pirates wanted a foul away from the ball. They're not gonna get it. Yes, indeed. I mean, that was just a bang bang play and uh, I don't know that the defender actually knew he was there. Now maybe a chance for Elida, but the ball takes a weird hop and it'll be a handball called against Reisner, certainly inadvertent. And Bluffton's lucky that was a handball. You had Thomas on the right side making that run again and they didn't really have anybody there to defend him. Pretty bad challenge there as Ramsdale will get tacked with a foul and Bluffton will have a free kick. And a dangerous one there going in behind the offensive player. Yeah, and we talked about this the first game. This ref and crew did an excellent job of keeping the game out of control, and um, I think they're well aware that there's uh, a little bit of chippiness going on right now, and 
how they're trying to clean it up right now. And it seems like you always start to see that toward the end of halves. Even a first half, teams knowing that they're about to head into the, the proverbial locker room. Obviously, here they'll be outside, right. but right. you start to get a little more chippy as you wear down. Yeah, I think you get a little frustration right now on both sides. Uh, you know, Elida was dominating possession, and now they're kind of struggling a little bit. Um, and, and Bluffton, obviously, is frustrated with the goal situation, and, you know, they're tired, everybody's working hard, and every now and then the game gets a little chippy, just just like we see right here. Novak called for a foul as he wraps up Joel Martinez. Elida will go quickly trying to score in this last 100 seconds, or excuse me, 80 seconds, 70 seconds. My math is you know, <laughs> not very sharp right now. This is week one for me too. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Kreitz tries to play it down the right side. That ends up being a great ball as Ramsdale runs on the end of it. That, and that was great vision to find that runner. I mean, there is he's 20, 30 yards behind the play, and he's able to find that to make that pass over there in that space. Bluffton sends it back in with 40 seconds on the clock. A good half of soccer for you on WOSN, especially if you're an Elida fan. Although Bluffton's had some good chances, they haven't looked completely outmatched in this game. Here's Hoffman on the far side, 18 seconds left to get something going for the Pirates. This one's sent into the box, straight at the keeper. And Howard will pick it up. He'll have to kick it away, but that will do it for the first half. 2-0 after two Ethan Thomas goals for Elida the as they lead the Bluffton Pirates at the half of the second game of the Elida Fall Classic. We will step aside, but when we return, it's more high school soccer on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. We welcome you back for the start of the second half. Evan Skilleter and Mitch Monfort with you tonight on a beautiful night in Elida as the Bulldogs lead the Bluffton Pirates 2-0 after two goals from Ethan Thomas. And it was all Bulldogs for most of that half, Mitch, but we started to see the Pirates start to put it together a little bit there toward the end of the half. Yeah, I feel like Bluffton was able to, you know, put some things together as they were moving the ball forward and, they're maybe going to get a little opportunities here. They believe in themselves now, maybe that they can counter this uh, light attack, and and we'll see how it plays out this uh, second half. I think their number one priority is you got to find Thomas. I mean, he's got two right now. Could easily be three, and you know, uh, they they got to shut him down and and then find an opportunity for themselves. One thing to keep in mind: the Pirates are playing without two uh, key starters, one in the midfield, one on defense, which. Of course, when you have two of your core out, it shifts around everybody else's positions. And we were talking at halftime that you know, a lot of times early in the season, that's not the worst thing in the world. You're not playing a conference game. It's low stakes. You're just trying to put things together. Yeah, definitely. And, and as a coach, you want that experience for those younger kids that are now starting that might come off that bench. And, you know, and that might pay dividends as we get going forward and, you know, the later part of the season. That's, and as a coach, that's really what you're looking for is those opportunities for those young kids. Uh, you know, to learn that new role as a starter and, you know, they have that experience and they the confidence that they need to play at that level. Elida in possession, working it up the left side. Pirates take it away. It's with Landon Novak, a guy that we saw, I think, start it right back, and now he's moved into the midfield as the Pirates, again, trying some things out, trying to figure out who can play where when – Missing a couple pieces. Yeah, that's that's always tough. You know, you shuffle kids around and you don't know that chemistry and you think you know where somebody might go if needed and unfortunately they feel like they have to make an adjustment and hopefully that will pay off for them in the second half. Foul on the far side of the field so Elida will get a free kick. Elida with eight corner kicks in the first half. Bluffton had two. No shots on goal for the Pirates and two shots on goal that both went in for Elida. Now the Pirates trying to work it forward. This is Andreas. 
And again, I, and I feel like a lot is being pesky again. Their defense has just been phenomenal. They're just relentless right now. Any chance they can, they're uh, applying that pressure on Bluffton, and it's causing the problems for Bluffton to get out and find that space that they have available to them. This ball taken away by the Pirates, sent up the right side and out for an Elida throw. Elida moving quickly. This is Gabe Adcock. Now a shot, and that one's saved. That was taken by Aiden Kreitz, the midfielder who is a junior. Now Bluffton trying to work it up the left side. Sent out by Elida. That was Grant Hardiman. So Bluffton will throw from the near side. Ball knocked back to the keeper, Camden Howard, who's had a nice night. He'll send it right back outside. Carson Wright moving up the right. Thomas with a brace so far tonight. Certainly looking for more here in the second half as the Pirate defense cuts that one out. It was Ethan Oglesby. Yeah, and Thomas saw that there was a lot of space on that weak side, and he, he wanted to exploit that, and I... I think if he'd had it again, he'd probably drive that ball a little bit harder and maybe more to the flag. Uh, but Bluffton's goalies, uh, you know, they're realizing that ball's coming. He's coming up high, and he, he might cause some problems for Elida trying to go forward. Now Thomas, again, sending it back. And as you said, Mitch, the goalkeeper playing off his line. But this time, Elida able to get there first. Gabe Adcock drops it back for Thomas, who tried to chip it, but it ends up going to the right side anyway, so Elida still with a decent chance here as Eben Jackson crosses back post, floats over everybody. Little Breeze might have lifted that ball a bit, but this ball still played into the box as Bluffton clears. Yeah, that goal, he's, he's got to be a little bit more careful there. I mean, uh, that was a little ambitious. He got a little high up off his line a little too much, and he's just got to be careful. I mean, you got to let your defenders do their job, but obviously he knows that's Elida's game plan right now is let's, let's play that long ball, but He's got, there's a balance in between, you know, as, as aggressive as he is and, you know, see if Elida can counter him coming up off that line so high. Up the right side goes Andreas and he just dribbles out of play. So Elida will throw in from the far side. Thomas's goals came at the 32-34 mark and the 2015 mark. Then as Bluffton kind of settled in toward the end of the half, the score remained 2-0 for the final 20 minutes of the half as Bluffton generated some chances, but still nothing on the board. Now maybe something developing. Hoffman drops it back for Andreas. Andreas around a defender, maybe a chance to cross. He takes another touch, gets another defender to go past. Now sends it on the ground and a nice tackle. What a tackle. It's a risky one, but it come up nicely. And now a foul against the Pirates against Ethan Thomas. You want to talk about a quality time tackle. I mean, that young man came in and slid in perfect time. And, you know, no foul at all. I mean, it was clean. And, and that allowed a lot to get out right away. And so that's a big play for that defender, than, you know, make that play and stop that opportunity because Bluffton really had a good chance to put one in the back of the net. Now Elida, that shot on the ground. I don't think that's quite what Joel Martinez was looking for, but sometimes when you have a 2 nothing score or a decent lead, you, you try those shots from outside when you get some space. Sure, again, and we, we talked a little bit about this in the uh, first half. You're kinda, you kind of got to make them know that threat's there, that you're not afraid to take that shot from distance. Uh, just uh, what a run right there. Come on, Gabe. Come on, Gabe. Adcock with a chance, and it's knocked down. Good job there by the keeper, Kyle Basil. But how about the wheels of Adcock? We've talked about the speed of Elida, and right there, definitely showing those wheels. Yes, indeed. I mean, the wheels are great, but he timed his run. He, he cut in perfectly. He knew that ball was going to be played, and I tell you what, uh, Bluffton got really lucky that that did not find the back of the net. Well played by them as well. Um, but but there, there's more than just Thomas on this team, and, and I think Lott is looking for that right now. Pirates back to work, moving the ball up the left side, but this one, an errant pass taken away by Elida. Out for a Pirate throw.
Jack Brown sent it up to Alec Davis. Elida took it back. Ethan Thomas has his pass taken away. And a lot of contact there as a pirate hits the deck and hit the deck hard. We've got two players that need attended to. And with that, we will step aside as well. 32.09 to go in the second half. Elida leads 2-0 on WOSN. Our scoreboard is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com for more. Welcome you back to Elida as Ethan Oglesby, the injured pirate, was able to get up and walk off. He certainly hit the ground nice and hard, as you likely saw if you were with us before the break. And... Mitch, we were talking at the break. A lot of times, early on in the season, you know, these low-stakes games, a player gets injured like that, perhaps just a, a bruise. You know, it's it's a tough fall. A lot of times, you don't want to bring him back into the game. 30 minutes left. Why don't you just rest and take it easy? Yeah, definitely. The last thing you want to see is you already are out one center back. Let's let's just try to keep it out of this game, and hopefully, you're back for the next one. I mean, this is a marathon, not a sprint. You got to you got to coach that way. It's it's tough sometimes, but. You, you got to be realistic with where you're at right now. And, again, this opportunity for another young man uh, to, to get a chance to get in the game. And please understand, we're not making judgments. If he comes back into the game, that's <laughs> yes. totally fine. We're just, you know, you talk about Bluffton already injured a little bit. And you know, do you want to push it? Who, who knows? That's certainly up to the coach. But you can see on the sideline, I'm not sure if it shows up on the camera, but they have four or five younger players getting loosened up, running around and stretched out. So have to imagine Bluffton will send some reserves into this game. For sure. And again, last thing you want for those kids to do is get hurt. So we got to warm them up. And, you know, exactly like you said, they're they're getting ready to get their chance. And it's a big game. I mean, you're down 2 nothing. Maybe you can make the change and you get that opportunity and uh, show out for your, your coach. And, and now all of a sudden you're not, you're not on the bench anymore. Pirate defense without one of their center backs as this one sent up the right side. Basil did a, did a nice job that time stepping up and knocking it away, but certainly a close play. Yeah, that was definitely uh, another dangerous threat for Elida. And well played by, uh, like you said, Basil did an excellent job. I mean, if he's not there, uh, they might be able to put that in again. I mean, they, I think Bluffton's done an excellent job on that adjustment. They've talked to their goalie like, hey, you have to stay off your line. Uh, we know Elida likes to kick the ball over the top, and they have the athletes to do it. So we need a we need a, another defender, and you're it. Elida throws in from the far side, middle of the field. Working it up the left. Nice job by the Pirates cutting in, taking that away. And as it gets darker, it gets harder and harder to see those numbers on the far <laughs> side. That's Luke Shepard. Shepard clears that off the back of a bulldog. Now Andreas, nice touch to the outside, working his way right to left. And that ball goes out. They were looking for number 18, that's Xander Mays, but the pass was too far behind. Yeah, he'd made a couple nice moves to get himself another 10, 15 yards of space. and. Lie to close it down, but you know, uh, Bluffton's going to have to find one more connection, I think, uh, to put that through and, and to find those wheels that they have up top. You can tell the adjustments that adjustment that the pirate, Pirates made that you talked about in the first half was bringing Basil off his line and playing higher up, and it has certainly slowed down the Elida chances in the Elida attack. You've seen a couple times where Put, it, put them in precarious situations, but Bluffton has really settled in defensively since then. Now they're not stringing together possession offensively, but at least defensively they're, they're eliminating or preventing a lot of good chances that we saw in the first half. Yeah, definitely. As a coaching staff, this, this is one that you have a problem, you have to solve it. Now, I think they've solved it to some extent, and you know it's making it tougher for Elida just to find those open runs that they were finding in the first half. But now you have to find that next solution to your problem, and going for and especially as, as we talked I mean they have three starters out and you know you got you got to you got to main make a connection somewhere with someone and and hopefully they can find it and you know maybe get a, get that moment momentum going uh, like we saw in that first game 
Bluffton drops it back to Basil, who switches fields over to Jack Brown. Now on the far side, Bluffton trying to put something together. Nice touch pass from Hoffman down the right side. Now they send it up for Mays, and once again, Lehman there to slide over and knock it away. Ball knocked down by Hoffman. Battle for possession. Nolan, excuse me, Landon Novak working for Bluffton and an offside called against Elida. So a free kick coming up with 27-26. And I think another thing that's kind of happened in the game is Elida has been a little bit more offensive the, the second half. I mean, we saw it swing about 10 minutes into the game. And so now it's harder to play those through balls because that space is not there now. If Bluffton's able to get a couple offensive looks, I would expect Elida is still going to try that through ball. And it's going to be key for that keeper to get off his line again. Uh, but, you know, they have to solve that sweeper for Elida. I mean, that's the, the next thing. They've got to figure out how to get that ball away from the sweeper of Elida. That ball goes out of play. A substitute or two ready to check in for Elida. Martinez and Adcock, return for Adcock back into the game, as is Joel Martinez, two guys that have certainly had an imprint on this game. Now a shot from deep, and that one's going to be far left but again I, I love that effort I, I love when you have some space at the top of the box you've got uh, it's low stakes you're up to nothing you're up Jackson by a couple Price goals take those shots I couldn't I'm all agree about more. it and when we coach we we uh, we tell our players you have the green light like you we've got to get those opportunities we got to start hitting those and you know they're backing in taking away the space and why not take that shot you yeah. know and it, was, it was a pretty good hit that time it just not as clean as you probably like but you know that's why we play it. We, we never know. Just never know. That one floats out off of the foot of Elijah Barraza. 25 minutes and change to play. Thomas tries to bring it down. It gets under his foot. Brown sends it back for Basil. And Basil has to put a knee into it and just boot it away. Yeah, that's a real tough uh, service the goalkeeper's got to play. He can't use his hands on that. And look at that touch from Adcock, the oh. shot, and the save by Basil. But I'll tell you what, that little touch to his right and the spin and the shot with the left, that was a fantastic look. Oh, yeah, that was absolutely gorgeous. And we, we saw it earlier. He's made a couple nice moves. And, he, you know, he, he's going to get one here if, if uh, Bluffton doesn't connect with him. Thomas sends it in with the left foot. That's a header toward goal, but not much behind it as Basil slides over and grabs it. Pirates trying to counter quickly, but Lehman there. Good coordination to knock that forward. That's a tough ball. You know, that, that height, that spin on the ball, it's a tough play. And again, Lehman's answered the call every single time so far. Brown closed off by Adcock, so he drops it back. Evan Jackson up to Martinez. Good work by Martinez to keep possession with the defender on his back. Andreas knocks it down. Hoffman gets to it. Pardon me, that's Mays in the center of the field for Bluffton. Nice challenge right there. Thomas up the left, but closed off nicely. Looks like the game's starting to open up a little bit here. We might get a chance here. This one over the top. Hoffman gets there. And a nice play right there by Howard, who came off his line. Looking back on it, probably shouldn't have, but still gets a foot on it. Yes, indeed. Makes the play. And just as I was saying, the game is starting to open up. We can see that there's space being given and taken. And uh, that's going to give opportunities for either side. And that was a nice opportunity. It's probably the best opportunity Bluffton had since the beginning of the game. Substitute checking in. Mays will take a seat. Get a number for you here shortly. Might be Isaiah Coli, number 14. Elida back to work. Good move there by Kreitz, but eventually runs into the defender, Landon Novak. Andreas on it. Back for Novak. 
That one will be taken away. That's Grant Hardeman stepping two. Now the ball played in for Adcock. Adcock closed off, and it goes off a Pirate and kept in play by Basil. Now Bluffton trying to counter. Andreas dribbles into space. How about that tackle? That was real clean. I mean, that, that changes the flow right there. I mean, you're, you went from one counter to the other that quick with one tackle. It's Joel Martinez, the Elida midfielder, taking that one away. Here's Andreas playing it up the line. And guess who? I mean, Lehman knocks every, it out. Every single time. I mean, he is eating that through ball alive, and they, they've got to get him to move one side to the other, or that pass is not going to get through cleanly. A little one-two action, but it's knocked away by Hardeman. And now a chance. And how about Novak getting back and taking that ball away? That looked like it was going to be one or two versus the keeper, excuse me, as Adcock and Thomas were working their way forward. And just had spoken earlier, as as Bluffton pulls forward, that gives a lot of more space to go behind them. And uh, they, they've got to be careful here. They might, a, a lot of can get another one here. Nice touch there. Bluffton working it up the left side. Here's Alec Davis and a nice tackle there. Tanner Lehman once again. I mean, they had him out wide that time. The problem is they didn't have anything on the other side to get him, and he wasn't able to get that ball cleanly before Lehman came again. I mean, he's made every single defensive play Elida's asked him to do and, and just really kept that defense together and just limited those uh, threats. Ball behind the defense. This is Ethan Blount, and that one taken by Howard. Now Elida trying to counter, moving numbers forward up the right side, but it's cut out by the Pirates. It goes out for an Elida throw. <laughs> that track being so close sometimes causes a little problem. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Elida will send it in down the line, trying to pick out Dean Baumgartner, his first action of the night. Ball knocked down and out. We light a throw. Adcock. He's working against Ben Hartzler, who takes it away. Hartzler, definitely a size advantage there. We light a still with possession. Adcock has it taken away. Andreas around a defender. Andreas does a really nice job in midfield. He's a, a junior, but... Certainly plays like a senior, does a really nice job under pressure. Yes, indeed. I mean, he's real shifty when he has the ball at his feet. I mean, he does an excellent job using his body, uh, how to use his body left and right to make, you know, that defender guess which way he's going. And, and a lot of times he just makes space when there's really not space to be there. And, and he, he does a great job with that. Ball brought down. That was Jack Brown. Now back for Hartzler. That's Nick Lovett. Now Novak. Novak sends it behind the defense, and we might have an issue here as Andreas goes down. We saw in the first game the referees on, on a couple plays where it looked like the last defender brought a guy down, a card came out. Sure, but sure. At the same time, this game really hasn't felt like it's getting out of hand, and, and the referees have been content to let things go on. Yes, indeed. I think maybe some tangled up feet, and the last thing you want them to do is that impact the game. And I mean, it was a quality call. I mean, he had a chance to get to that ball, and as a ref, he probably made the right decision. So Andreas will line up the free kick. Pirates trying to get something going. Andreas floats this into the box. It's a well-taken free kick. Knotted up by Elida. Adcock tries to bring it down. Now Hartzler. Hartzler up from defense. Hartzler maybe a chance to take a shot. Sends it down the right side and gobbled up by Howard, but maybe the best chance we've seen for Bluffton, if that tells you anything about the half for them. Yes, indeed. I mean, they had one other look, but the they are doing a, 
having a tough time getting that ball going forward and just finding opportunities. I mean, you know, the foul gives them a chance to get set up, get their people forward, and this might swing a little bit here, see if Bluffton can build up on this, you know, keep it trapped in, or can Elida counter? Elida sends that forward. Hartzler knocks it down. Hartzler against Adcock once again. That's a good-looking ball from Hartzler down the right, but Barraza's got some wheels. It goes out, and last touched by Bluffton. Ball back in play as Andreas brings it down. Adcock, though, takes it away. Yes, indeed. I mean, he read that pass perfectly and gives his team an opportunity to get forward here and see what happens here. Ball knotted up by Brown. That was Jackson. Now down for Andreas. Nick Lovett has it taken away. Jackson. Jackson down the right side as Cross scuffed a bit, taken away by the Pirates. Again, we talked earlier in the game. We have a couple injuries for Bluffton. I think that's kind of hurting them right now. they just having a tough time finding that middle, uh, how to control this game and how to work that ball around a little bit sometimes in the middle, and Elias taking advantage of it. Nice tackle there, but Adcock got back to it only momentarily, though, as Hartzler able to clear it out for an Elida throw. A few substitutes ready to check in. As we near the 16-minute mark, still 2-0 on the Charles River scoreboard. Make sure you check out Charles, or, or excuse me, CRiver.com to see their job openings and learn more about the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in our area. These two teams will be back in action on Saturday. Back here for the second part of the Fall Classic. If you missed it, our first game was a 3-2 win for Wasion over Botkins. And an exciting one, 3-0 at one point for Wasion as Jackson gets behind the defense and sends it into the side netting. 3-0 for Wasion in the, in the second half. The... Botkins Trojans scored two unanswered and looked like they might get a third, but not able to capitalize. Yes, indeed. I mean, that was a fantastic game. I mean, you want to talk about momentum swinging, uh, you know. Botkins struggled first half, to say the least, and Wasion felt very confident where they were at, but the fight and the commitment of those boys on that team just really led them back into the game, and a very good game, fun game to watch. So the winner of this one will take on Wasi on Saturday. Thomas tries to get behind the defense with a touch. Thomas still with the ball at his feet. Now crosses this one back post. Novak knocks it down for Bluffton. Adcock almost takes it away. Now Bluffton working up the right side. No one there for the Pirates as they try to send it behind the defense, and Grant Hardeman runs onto it. Hardeman back in play. Adcock sends it up to Thomas. Thomas on side. Thomas with a chance, chips it up, chips it in. The hat trick for Ethan Thomas. And Elida lead three to zero. What an absolute great he shot. I mean, he knew the goalie was going to be high. And that's a tough shot. I mean, you get you you have pressure on you from the defenders. You have pressure on you from the goalie. And you, you don't want to blast. You have to have some touch on that. And he, it's easy to put that ball over the top as a, and as a score. And he just feathered that in, and it was a great shot. So Ethan Thomas with three goals in this one as his team out to a 3 nothing lead. On the Charles River scoreboard, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Now Elida right back to work as Adcock takes it away. Adcock with the shot, 
and a defender came in, maybe got a piece of it to make it a little easier for Basil, and the clock needs to start as we have it going here. You know, there's a, a lot of talk about Ethan Thomas and how great he is, but I'll tell you what, Gabe Adcock has played a fantastic mm -hmm. game. I mean, he's made some great runs, and he's made some balls to Ethan to make it, those available goals, and the two of them work very well together. Nice nice little duo up top for Elida. And Adcock only a sophomore, so plenty more soccer for him to be played. Ethan Thomas a senior. But I'll tell you what, the WBL should be a really fun league to watch this year. I, I couldn't agree more. There's there's talent in and out of that WBL. And, and you know, Elida's going to have to figure some things out on some of those other teams, and teams are going to have to adjust to Elida. So this, this is going to be a great year for Elida, and we'll see how, how it shapes up for him. Referee marks off his 10 yards. As Andreas lines one up, Pirates trying to get something here. Even one goal could be a decent consolation for a team struggling with injuries as Andreas' free kick is knocked out for a throw. And again, if you're the Pirates, you can really use a game like this for good, yes, right? You yes. can either, I mean, you can watch tape if you want. You can... Uh, just talk about it, but you, as a coach, you get a chance to evaluate your team and how they respond to some adversity, how they, you know, some guys playing in different positions, how that works out, how they gel, and uh, a, a lot to take away from a game no matter what the final score is. Exactly, and I mean, another thing too is I think Bluffton might be outmatching speed right now today, and, and you got to learn how to beat speed. I mean, that's the ultimate factor a lot of times. It's just athleticism, and Elida has it. And so for these younger kids to try to figure out that, answer that problem that's that's a, a big task of them and, but as a coach you love that opportunity to coach that into them and and learn ways to move the ball when you might not be the faster team and and hopefully get an opportunity to put one in for them and again build on this game that you know we know we're hurt uh but we, we still played hard and we, we figured out some things that we need to figure out absolutely you light it back to work but it's taken away by the pirates novak it's possession, but only momentarily. Ball sent skyward down the right side. Certainly out for a pirate throw with 11 and a half remaining. Be sure to check out all our local broadcasts this year. You can find more at WTLW.com, but you can also check out the free WOSN Scores app. It's the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more sports and more schools and more scores than WOSN. Just search in the App Store or Android Play Store. It's, for me, great to have that on Friday nights when there's so many high school football games going on all at the same time. You can also check out scores from all sports and conference standings. That one kept in play by the wheels of Eben Jackson. He crosses it into the box right at the top. Novak knocks it down and Pirates clear, but only as far as Eli does Ben Osman. Yeah, again, Jackson has just another gear, and, and when he turns it on, you can see it. And that was a fantastic play to keep that in. Evan Jackson also only a sophomore. He does a real nice job on this wing. They give him that opportunity to, to make those plays, again, with his speed and athleticism. He just... He does an excellent job playing his position. Pirates with a throw in. This is Cole Burkholder. Ball dropped back to Jack Brown. Brown, another one of those guys that, yeah, you know, he can play defense, but also a very skilled forward, can play through the midfield some, but with the Pirates being shorthanded, kind of forced to play back in that left back slash center defense role. Yes, indeed. And as a coach, you love that kid. I sure. Mean, you know, that just gives you opportunity. You have options. And, you know, you can move this kid here and there, and he's going to make an impact. Because you, you know the kind of player he is. Martinez, Kreitz, and Reisner all back in for the Bulldogs. Is Ethan Thomas. Ethan Thomas also checks in. A 
Lydie keeping their foot on the gas, almost literally, with the speed that they just put back onto the field. Yeah, yes, indeed. And then first game of the year for them. I mean, yeah. you know, why not? we got to figure out what our legs feel like. And, uh, you know, they have a great showing for the first game. And they know speed something they need to keep building as the year goes on. And hopefully uh, they continue to do so. Andreas brings it down in the midfield as Bluffton tries to get going right to left on your screen. You see the footwork of Brown. So he sends it up the left side and knocked out by Elida. So the Pirates will have a throw as they advance forward. They'll wait for a substitute to check in before sending this one in. So Ethan Blount heading to the sideline. Number 14 for Bluffton, Isaiah Coli checking in. Isaiah Coli in for the Pirates. We can also see a lot of starting to work maybe some subs and hopefully get some other players in as well to develop their game. And, you know, same thing Bluffton's working on you. You're always trying to develop your kids and make everybody better. Uh -oh. Thomas might have gotten stepped on there on the heel as he comes up a little limber. And look how quickly they check him out. Yes, indeed. There's no, no need to force it. I was curious to see how long he would stay in after that play. I mean, as a coach, you know, you know it's the uh, last thing you want to see somebody get hurt, especially your goal scorer, Max you know, late in the game when the game's pretty much in hand. Maddox Bell checking in for Thomas. That ball sent out. It'll be a bluff and throw. As we near the seven-minute mark. On the Charles River scoreboard. Appreciate their sponsorship of this program and everything else they do. And make sure if you're a, a business owner in the area, you check out all the different ways you can sponsor local programming. Very affordable prices. And, um, you know, in, in my line of work, I've looked into advertisements, advertised with WOSN before myself, and uh, always appreciate the advertising team. So make sure to get a hold of us. For some really cool opportunities to sponsor local athletics. Definitely. I mean, as a coach of a local team, I mean, we, these kids, relish in the opportunity to, to be on TV and to talk about it. And, you know, it's always great watching our tape, as they would say, but when they actually get a broadcast, it really means something. So they get those sponsorship, you know, to have these abilities for these kids in this area. I mean, it's it's special. And, you know, as a coach, I greatly appreciate the, the uh, sponsorship that's given, you know, uh, to this program. Absolutely. And, you know, I talk about what I do with a lot of people all over the world, not world, but all over the sure. country when I go out and, um, and travel. And everyone's surprised to hear of how in-depth our high school coverage is here. You know, every local news station has a high school sports report, if you will. Sure, sure. But to have multiple broadcasts every week, to have an actual sports center type exactly. sports show yes, on sir. Friday nights, and uh, to just to have all the programming that we do, it this really doesn't exist as much as you would think in the United States. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. Uh, you know, like you said, I've been around a lot of places, and this is special. Our area is blessed to have these opportunities. And, again, it doesn't happen if you don't have that sponsorship and, you know, that commitment from the community. I mean, it's a real big deal, you know. Like you said, the highlights show everything. I mean, I've had teams on the highlights show when I coached the boys at Lima Senior. And sure. It was, a, it was a real big deal for them. I mean, They'll never forget it, you know, and uh, the conversations we have years later about it and how fun it was is, you know, it's something special as a coach. You know, it's great to coach kids, uh, you know, and hopefully make them better than just the game. It's all about everything as for the kids, and the opportunity that's given to the kids is spectacular through this program. Absolutely. Camden Howard picks the ball up. Again, we said this toward the end of the first half, but – Howard, as of late, hasn't had a whole lot to do. Sure, sure. But he's done a well job with the, the things yeah. he had oh, to do. Of course. You know, and, you know, I'm sure Tom enjoys he hasn't been that busy. Sure. Um, you know, but he's also excited that he's answering the call every time. I mean, the first, what, minute, there was, there was quite a bit of pressure on him. And, you know, that could, have, that could swing the game completely the other way, you know. And so he's, he's done a well job, done a great job for what he's been asked to do tonight. And he lied with the cross to the far post. Getting on the end of that was Maddox Bell. And a big collision there. 
no whistle. And, and honestly, I mean, that's one of those plays that both players are running full speed at each other, and which one do you call the foul on? It, it, exactly. Just because the kid fell over, does that mean he was? He, it, it's a tough, tough call, and these referees have done such a great they, job. They've tonight. been absolutely great this entire, this in, these two games. I mean, but that was a bang bang play, and sometimes bang bang plays happen. And uh, hopefully the kid's all right. I mean, he got hit pretty good, and you know. But again, I feel like the second game's under control. The first game got a little chippy, but. It didn't take long for them to reel it in and, you know, make sure the game was played within the rules. Right. And ultimately, the referees did call a foul here. So yes, we will have a free kick the for the Pirates Siever and a bunch of substitutes checking in. Zach Seaver will take over between the pipes. Zach Seaver, a junior goalkeeper for Elida after a great job from Howard. Ball dropped back for Basil as he gets rid of it. We're under four minutes to play in the second half. Pirates working it up the right side. Cole Burkholder over there on that far side. The other thing is, when you have all these injuries, you obviously sacrifice depth. Oh, yes. Bluffed and working in some different names, but how many options do they do they really have? Exactly. I mean, sometimes it, it's tough, you know, and you got you got a lot of kids, like we said earlier, out of position, and you, it's tough to, as a coach. You expect a lot out of them, but sometimes there's just not really an opportunity, you know, to get them that training except for game time. Nice physical play there by Aiden Kreitz, taking it away from Bluffton. Now Hartzler runs into Kreitz, and a great job by Kreitz really just standing his ground. Yeah. He can call it a tackle if you want, but either way, it's good positioning and just smart play. Exactly. I mean, he he had that right for that space, and, I mean, he just kind of stood there and said, hey, this is, I own this, and it, it caused a turnover. Hartzler takes the free kick quickly. Knotted down by the Elida defense, and now Kreitz up the right side. Kreitz, one touch, gets around one defender, tries to play it through, but it's cut out. That was Bluffton's Luke Shepard. Now Gavin Reisner knocks that off Kreitz. And that's last touched by Elida, so a Bluffton throw coming up as we reach or near the two-minute mark. And more good job. I mean, I'll tell you what. This Elida defense, yeah, we, we've talked about Lehman plenty. But you talk about these other defenders and how they, they've always seemed to be on the same page right there. Two defenders closing off, going shoulder to shoulder to shield the, the offensive player. And they were on the same page the whole time. Yes, indeed. I mean, and you're talking multiple subs in here. So we're right. talking some kids that might have not a lot of experience to play together. And, uh, they, you know, they've done an excellent job keeping that defense together and stifling. Bluffton. Bluffton is trying to figure out. And, and again, we talked about Lehman constantly, but there's been multiple gentlemen back in that back line that's done an excellent job. So a corner coming up here is, I think what happened there was Kyle Basil was trying to keep it in play just so he could send it forward, but took a bad touch and it went out. So this one nodded toward the right side. It'll be kicked out by the Pirates. Sent back into play. And it'll be cleared by Bluffton. Here's Mays. Layman steps over. Good patient buildup now from Elida as that left footed shot is toward goal. Nice turn from Gavin Reisner, but a good save by Basil. Yes, indeed. Elida was really pinging that ball around and they knew where they wanted to go, and it worked out pretty well for them. They got a Pretty good look, you know, and the goalie made a nice save on that. And, you know, a way to keep it under control, as I would say as a coach. I mean, there, there's a lot of young youth out there for Bluffton, but you don't want to add another goal for a lot of, you know, you, you've done a pretty good job staying in this game. It's been maybe frustrating, but good opportunity for those younger kids. 
Pirates with 14 seconds to try to get something on the board, but Elida making sure that doesn't happen as it's dropped all the way back to Kyle Basil. And with five seconds left, this one will roll out and it will do it for today's game. Three nothing, Elida wins this one. We talked about it, it's early in the season. A lot you can take away for both teams, but your overall thoughts here. You know, I, I love the way Elida found the playmakers and they, they know their skill set. Their skill set is we've got wheels and we've got bodies we can play in. You know, we can keep subbing in and we're gonna just put that pressure on you. I, I think Bluffin didn't look bad by any stretch of imagination. I just feel like that youth kind of hurt him a little bit, but Bluffin's gonna have a great season, it's just, we get, they got to get healthy, and then you know, and then they got to find that next link up, which I think will come as these young men get healthy as as the year continues. Absolutely, three goals from Ethan Thomas, the opening night hat trick for the senior, who's bound for a great year. Looking forward to watching both of these teams as they progress. Want to thank our scoreboard sponsor, Charles River, for their sponsorship of tonight's game. Want to thank our camera guy, Jacob Hot Dog O'Neill, who said uh, he gave us a rating for the Elida Hot Dogs, and we appreciate that. We won't reveal it. We'll wait till the end of the year to, to make a comprehensive list. But as always, we want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Soccer on WOSN. For Mitch Monfort, I've been Evan Skilleter. Again, your final 3-0 Elida winning tonight. Have a great night, and God bless.